Hello and welcome to Learn Data. It's great to have you on this channel. I'm Nilesh, and in this video, we'll talk about orthogonal matching pursuit. Uh, we'll start out with a discussion on the linear algebra because it's relevant, and then we'll look at the algorithm, both visual intuition and uh, a little bit of code. And then we'll look at the two examples one is how we can recover a signal from a noisy measurement and how we can uh, denoise the image uh, using this particular algorithm both of these are from the docs uh, and then we'll look at the code snippet as to how uh, we can implement this this is the reference paper uh, that you can refer to for further reading now for linear algebra here is the equation that you've probably seen before ax is equal to b and in the example shown below a represents this 3 by 3 matrix which is 1 5 2 8 6 4 9 7 x are these three unknowns and b are these uh, um, values on the right hand side so each of that line in the matrix can be represented as an equation so there are three equations uh, as shown here so 1x1 5x2 3x3 is equal to 10 and then 2x1 8x2 6x3 is equal to 12 and similarly for the last one so in case when we have the three in uh, in case when we have equal number of equations and unknowns we can use the equation shown above and we can uh, calculate the uh, answers for the values of x1 x2 and x3 as shown here and on the bottom left hand side uh, we have the python code for that using the linear algebra library dot solve however in situation where the number of equations is not equal to the number of unknowns then uh, the it is represented by the equation shown here where a has a plus sign next to it and that tells that it's a pseudo inverse of a and such a system is uh, in this case where the number of equations is much larger than the number of unknowns we have one two three four five six seven equations and just three unknowns so that's called as overdetermined system and there is other side of this as well so there are less number of equations and more number of unknowns so that would be underdetermined system of equations so how does one solve this so in python uh, we can use least squares from the linear algebra library and this is the output we get for x1 x2 and x3 now if you plug in these values for x1 and x2 and x3 in these equations uh, you may likely won't get the exact uh, numbers that are listed here for example if you type in 1 x1 uh, value of this 5 into this plus 3 into this it's likely not going to be equal to 10 it could be closer uh, depending on, on the error of fit that was there so why we are talking about this the, uh, the reason is because in orthogonal pursuit algorithm we are looking at a system that is uh, over determined uh, or under determined and as shown in this uh, notation here in blue x is approximately equal to d into gamma uh, and there is another scikit learn notation which is y is approximately equal to x into w so if you in the previous slides we saw ax and b so if we try to look at the notations the D stands here for A and the same thing stands here for X. The B stands for X and Y and the X here that we have seen before stands for Gamma or W. And the visual intuition for how the orthogonal matching pursuit algorithm works is let's say we have this dictionary D which has measurements uh, that are shown here by the blue dots and we have the uh, values for x which is the signal uh, again shown by blue dots and the difference between those is shown here by r which is the residual 
Now, in terminology used in describing this in papers, each of these columns in the dictionary is called as an atom. Okay, and uh, when what we are essentially doing is we are uh, multiplying these two to get uh, and then subtracting from this to get the residual. So to start with the gamma zero has nothing in it, so it's zero, and we set the value of uh, residual equal to x in the next step so that's what we do here and then in the next step uh, we pick one atom or one column from the dictionary such that uh, and one value in this particular gamma one is non-zero as shown here by the magenta dot the idea here is to minimize the the value of r1 uh, minimize in the sense to have the value of the new residual r1 that is lesser than the previous value of the residual then we go in the next step where we pick another atom or another column from the dictionary and then here we have another value for gamma 2 uh, which is chosen such that the new value for the residual is lesser than the previous value of residual. So R2, which is the current residual, is lesser than the previous residual. And so on, we go up uh, for the third time, we choose another atom or a column from dictionary D, and we choose the value of gamma 3 such that the residual current residual becomes less than the previous residual which was r2 and so on this is continued until we reach either a tolerance limit or the residual becomes zero and then these are the coefficients that we have uh, uh, calculated or estimated as, as that are shown here in uh, by magenta dots now the idea with these coefficients is that these uh, that particular vector is a sparse vector so only few of those measurements would be non-zero so the entire data set could be represented by very few uh, measurements uh, and the output would be closer to uh, the actual output that would have been here in x uh, I hope this was a little bit of intuition you got. We'll now look at the actual algorithm that's from the paper uh, cited at the bottom of this slide. Uh, so we initialize the dictionary D signal X uh, that we have seen. So we have the dictionary D, we have the signal X and a target sparsity K or target error. So there are two methods we can minimize uh, we can solve this either by having a target sparsity or having a target error. So target sparsity would be how many of these coefficients should be non-zero and target error would be uh, the difference between these two, how lower of a residual would you want. And then the output representation here is x approximately equal to d gamma that we saw in the previous slides. So initializing i here i is the uh, is for indices and then r is equal set equal to x as we did before and then gamma is set to zero in the very first step and then the idea is to iterate through this next set where uh, the first step is to take a dot product of the column uh, in the matrix D uh, with the residual uh, and the uh, concept behind that would be um, to maximize the correlation between the columns in the dictionary and the resultant vector so if you if you think about it if there is a higher correlation between the uh, column in the dictionary uh, and with the residual it means that that particular column is explaining much of the uh, 
uh, residual that we have and therefore that's a good candidate to be picked for uh, creating the coefficient and then in this step we are uh, uh, creating indices of the columns that were picked in this step that was uh, for k and then uh, that is used to find the value for gamma which would be the uh, sparse representation of x or those are the coefficients that we saw in the long uh, vector column and i'm uh, not 100 percent sure about this part but this is where the minimization problem would be there where we are trying to minimize gamma to uh, by this equation that we have x minus d of gamma and there's a l2 norm of that so here we are using the least squares to calculate the gamma and then that gamma is used in this equation right here to calculate the new residual and then we iterate this through this step again and with the new residual we find another column that uh, that has higher correlation with this current residual and then use that as an index get the index of that and calculate gamma for the coefficient gamma using so the plus sign here again is the pseudo inverse uh, and then calculate the new residual and go on until uh, the stopping criteria which could be either the uh, number of non-zero coefficient gamma coefficients or the target error that's the uh, difference between the uh, uh, that is the residual so how less of a residual you need so that those were the two ways i tried to explain the uh, intuition for uh, orthogonal matching pursuit algorithm the uh, visual representation and this was another way if you st still are confused about this i'd suggest uh, looking at the paper that cited below uh, it has an additional detailed explanation about it and this is these are the equations from the scikit-learn docs where we are uh, we have these equations again the notation is different and here i've tried to put what notation they are based on the previous slide so w means gamma y means x x means the dictionary d and w is gamma so if we fix the number of non-zero elements then uh, we are trying to minimize this uh, uh, this problem right here this objective function and if we uh, try to fix the target error of or we are targeting the error then we are trying to minimize this particular objective function that is shown here which is subject to this less than tolerance what this is saying that uh, the residual uh, is uh, less or the error is less than a preset value for uh, the tolerance now let's look at some examples so this is a very first example from the docs uh, we'll also do the coding for this in the next video and here the very first plot on the left hand side shows the raw sparse signal and then uh, this signal to this signal some noise is added and then we use the orthogonal matching pursuit algorithm to identify the signal from the noisy data set and these are the uh, two reconstructions from noisy data set and this is a reconstruction from could be like a control uh, used from a noise free data set and as you can see uh, from the two plots below the algorithm is uh, doing a pretty good job uh, trying to get the uh, actual signal from the noisy signal as we can see uh, some of the points do not match uh, the actual data but most of the points are uh, pretty close to uh, what is there in the original data so for example this point does not match uh, uh, this point does not match but then these other points they are 
in along the same direction and looks like they are also of the same magnitude and with cross validation we get this result which is again similar to what we have in this case uh, except there's some additional noise picked up here but this is just to show that uh, cross validation uh, could be uh, there's an inbuilt method for cross validation if that is needed while implementing orthogonal matching pursuit now this is an example of image denoising and on the left hand side we see that uh, this is a raw image uh, this is image to which some noise has been added and then on the right hand side we have this image where the we run it through the uh, orthogonal matching pursuit uh, algorithm and we try to uh, minimize the noise that's in the image and although the image is not as sharp as what we have on the leftmost side but we can see that the noise has been blurred out a little bit if we look at a close-up of those images we can see that this pixelated noise in the middle image is removed from uh, the image uh, that's on the right hand side although if we look at these other features on the petals of this flower uh, those are not visible so uh, of course there would be some additional training required for the model to maybe pick up these features or the patch sizes that are used to uh, train the dictionary maybe those need to be tuned as well to pick up uh, these small features so uh, in the end for code snippet it's the standard uh, method that we have seen in all previous slides we'll have some data such as shown here and then the method is the same we have linear model dot orthogonal matching pursuit we fit it on train and then predict on the test set so that was it for this video i hope in this video you got at least some intuition about what orthogonal matching pursuit algorithm is how uh, how the algebra behind it works and uh, kind of have a visual a picture of what it could be doing also we looked at uh, two examples um, maybe if you are working in signal processing area you probably have a better idea of how noises the signals are and how this could be implemented or how this could be useful in those situations and finally we looked at the code snippet in next video we look at the actual coding until then please like share and subscribe hope to see you all in the next video thank you